Hey everyone, welcome to Lauren De Laguna. I have a very fantabulous guest tonight. We have the one and only Minnie Manson, and he has requested to start off tonight with a performance. So I am gonna go ahead and make him full screen and we will start the show. Hello, hello everybody, it's your favorite entertainer, Minnie Manson. All right, then. You can see those candles. The real candles right there. Let's grab a gold sweat, lead and make us some blood. Pack beer to love and to fuck and to only see ourselves. And remember this your hotel, this is all vacant, and I can't tell that you ain't vacant, because I take that threat, like the best of them, would you care, care, care for me, I love you enough to ask you again, would you care, care, care for me. For me, no one better save me. I have no care for me. Care, care, care for me. But he knows it's not just my clothes. It's not what happens when we are between. But you drag us to the shed and then lost it down in the fucking face. This is a sacrifice. The whole chest has one piece of the chest, and I can't kill that you know and take it. I take that way. Not the best of it. But you tell him for me. I love you enough to ask you again. Would you kill, kill, kill for me? You won't make this save me unless you kill for me. I need your attention, love, for results. Who are you going to lose? Service for attention, love, for results. Who are you going to lose? Sideways for attention, always for results. Who are you going to cross? Would you kill, kill, kill for me? I love you when I do ask you again Would you care, care, care for me? Love you when I do ask you again Would you care, care, care for me? You want me to see me I'll ask you care for me Care, 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 care for me yeah. Sideways for attention, long wish the results. Who are you going to cross? Damaging false uh, allegation. Oh, yeah. I don't hear you speaking. Nice. Good job. I was on mute during your performance. Oh, you wow. For a minute there, I was like, oh, great. I have such trouble with audio, I can't tell you. 
for you. Well, thank you so much for performing for us. That was awesome. You should resurface about Leonardo. I'm having trouble with this. Hold on. Let me get out of this menu here. This Caprio. Thing. What? Keeps showing up here. Yeah. All right. It's a Leonardo DiCaprio thing. I was watching. Um, I have some other songs queued up here. and Perfect. And, well, I was hoping to get some questions, though, before we get back to that. I Definitely. Know yeah. Okay, so let me get my chair. I almost forgot the candles were behind me, too. I was like, whoa. If the house suddenly catches on fire, that comes before doing the show. So if I just see me running for the fire extinguisher, it's right over there. <laughs> Please don't. Oh, man, you have so many fans in chat. So many people love your music. <laughs> what was that? You have so many fans in chat. So many people what? love your music. Really? Thank you. Yeah. So I where like that. Oh, you can't fucking see. Um, that's the thing when I lay my phone down. I'm going back and forth here. I'll give you time. Take a minute. Yeah, I, I just work with what I have. Maybe. Lots of people that criticize my audio, and I'm like, why isn't it plugged in? It keeps unplugging. You see, the flame drains real quickly if I'm on StreamYard. I cannot even use my laptop because it's only a $300 laptop, and that's why... I cannot mm -hmm. use my Yeti, my Yeti microphone that I spent all that money on this beautiful blue microphone, and I can't even use it because oh, when I go on StreamYard on my laptop, it doesn't support the powerhouse, which is StreamYard, so it drops. So I use my phone to do the show, and I use my computer to do the karaoke. That helps me in case I forget, although I know Kill, Kill, Kill for me. And most of Marilyn Manson's songs by heart. When you're performing, you still need that guide because things get your attention. So go ahead. So, yeah, well, I wanted to know um, where you grew up. Chicago, Illinois. I'm going to show my stickers real quick. These stickers are for sale. Okay. Where can you buy those stickers? We'll definitely post the link to where you could purchase these stickers in the chat. You know, Henry will. I think you temporarily froze. One of us froze. Is it me? Can you put a chat, one in chat, if it's me, two in chat, if it's him, if it's me, you won't know I'm saying this. Did I freeze? Henry, can you put in back chat? It doesn't look like. Okay, so it's not me. I think it's his Wi-Fi is down. We will give him a minute. He is still here. I'm just going to solo lay out myself, let him figure himself out for a minute, not leave him frozen like that. Um, so super fun so far. He's great. I'm sure he's going to figure out his Wi-Fi and be right back. But I'm really excited to ask him all sorts of questions about how he grew up. And I want to know what got him into um, Marilyn Manson in the first place. And I want to talk about his YouTube career. And then um, he did want to get into a little bit of the drama. And you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stop that. He is back. Hey, I don't have good internet. I can't afford it. I had to pay $450 the other day just to put my internet back on. This is probably gonna happen a lot. So if it does, I'll leave the show. I'll come back. Okay. I, I call us. I was two black screens with two white things. It looked like a pair of square boobs. So anyway, I have these stickers. I have this one. It has my YouTube channel, which is minimanson.com. These are four-inch vinyl stickers, high quality. You can see it in my Discord as well. And Miss Laguna here has my... Oh, D Laguna, correction. I'm sorry. She has my um, DM, and she can get in touch with me. You could get in touch with her via the show here. Also, my internet is... My email is... Uh, mini underscore manson at yahoo.com so this is my other sticker that's the second one i made with the 666 on it so i wanted to let you know those are five dollars each if you buy three i'll give you three for ten bucks you know you get a deal i have autographs eight by ten laminated signed by me i'll even kiss it if you want and seal it in there and magnets oh let me show you the magnets you see yeah i have one right here this is the magnet. 
this is a eight what size this is this? Four by six. It's like a standard photograph. Yeah, very cool. Very cool that you have all this stuff. Where did you uh, purchase all of these things? Where did you get these I, things made? I had the photographs made at Walgreens. I took the lamination. I laminated it myself. I have a machine. These are hand cut. I cut them myself. You see oh. that? You see that in there? And yeah, I also put the magnet on the back. You see that? The entire back is the magnet. This is not a cheap piece of shit. This is worth $10. And you better get them now while Minnie Manson cuts them instead of some factory. Wow. So, wow, that's really um, entrepreneurial of you. I so, sell good products. There's not going to, if you see any shit out there, then you know I didn't sell it. You know, you know I didn't make it. Okay. Well, <laughs> so can you tell me a little bit about, about your childhood, did you grow up with siblings or was it just you? I had a brother, he's older, and a sister, she's younger. My sister's dead, my mom is dead, my dad is dead, my brother's still alive, but he's a religious fanatic over there in Pensacola, Florida, giving a hard time to um, all the churches out there because they're not Christian enough. <laughs> my dad was a Baptist minister and so is my brother. Oh, we don't okay. talk. I don't talk to my family at all. Not not my brother's ex-wife, not his kids, nothing. Okay, anyway. So and it's better um, that way. Were, were your parents married as you were growing up or did of course, they the World War II generation, you bet they were. They didn't divorce no matter how bad things got. Okay. <laughs> and um at what age did you, I'm sorry, I'm very sorry for all the losses that you have. That's devastating to lose your younger sister and to lose your parents is so quickly. Yeah, my whole loss of life has been a loss, but, you know, I seem like I'm doing better now. But, you know, I have to wait till I was over 50 for things to start coming together for me. But, yeah, things are much better now than they ever were. I wasn't happy was in my 20s, my 30s, or even 40s, but in my 50s, I seem to be doing pretty well. What was it like uh, in your childhood having like this minister as a father? And, Horrible, because I didn't and you, believe in the religion, you, and I had to hide that. And you felt how how long how old were you when you realized like oh I don't believe this? Fourteen. Okay. And I went along with it because I knew if I didn't go along with it, I would have got my head bashed in and worse thrown oh. out of the house. Okay. See, I thought my family would love me if I stayed home with them and did whatever they told me. But one time my sister-in-law says, the reason why we hate you is because you're slow and you don't fight back. I said, well, if I fight back, David will throw me out of the house. That's my brother. And that would have been true. Was, yeah, so, so much better to be homeless because I have pride and shit. So one day I figured out I'm just going to leave because if I don't do it now, I never will. I had to experience oh, homelessness a few times in order to gain freedom, but it was worth it in the end. How old were you when you moved out? The first time I was 26, but after about a year I failed and had to come back home. And thank God my dad still owned the house. So he's told my brother to let me back in the house and he did. And two years later I left again, had to come back six months later. But the third time my brother says, you know what? I'm throwing you out. And he threw me out because I lost my job at the planetarium. Wow. I used Why to teach astronomy. Oh, wow. Where did you teach astronomy? The, the world-class Adler Planetarium in Chicago. <clears throat> very cool. Very cool. It's, it's a great wow. job. I even wrote a coloring book for them and everything. Did artwork for them. They put my artwork all over the museum during Planet Week. Wow. It was like 2001, 2002. Oh, very cool. That's really yeah. cool. I love that for you. Um, I hate work. I always hated every job I had, but that job was special, even though it was hard on my legs because I had to stand all day. Mentally, that job was just about the greatest job I ever had. Oh, don't you love experiences like that? It's so nice. It's like faith restored in humanity when you finally get like a decent job. Um, yeah, museums are great. You know, when I was a kid, when I got to go on field trips to museums, that made a positive impact on me. It never went away. To this day, I like to give that same experience. I go to the Wax Museum in California three months ago, and because I was so well-dressed, they thought I was part of the exhibits, and I had such a great time in there. I took my time. Three hours it took me to go through there, just having fun with the exhibits and also the customers. 
they should pay me just to be standing there and interact with people. I'll be like this and I'll be paying, not paying attention. And I move and someone will go, Oh, <laughs> like when I was sitting at Al Capone's desk, they had an Al Capone section. So I sat there with my feet up on the desk next to Al Capone. And then I moved and all the people are like, Whoa. <laughs> That's pretty Chicago funny. bang bang. <laughs> yeah. When did you start dressing? So, um, so uniquely. And um, wow. About two years ago. Two years ago? How did you dress two, beforehand? Like a fucking yuppie, like a normie. I'd wear polos or t-shirts. or I'd still wear dress shirts. You know, I've always wore dress shirts and suit jackets. But I never had this gothic entertainer in image, you know. I was, I've always dressed nice. So you dressing have- like this is not new. Just to part with the makeup and trying like what I'm doing now, being an entertainer, that's what I've been doing in the last two years. That's awesome. Um, do you have pictures of what you looked like before you started doing that that you want to share or no? Well, I don't have the pictures with me. I, can't, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> not, in, not in the show. Well, but, maybe we um, can put it on our page afterwards if you send me You some. could go in my Discord and if you know how to do that, just pictures of me before I transitioned, you know, and pictures of me now so i don't hide the fact that i my my birth name was naomi stewart people throw that to me all the time thinking it's going to ruin me hey you know what i want people to know who who i used to be because all those people who made fun of me and picked on me in grade school high school not so much college no one picked on me but everyone ever thought i was a weirdo and crazy and would never amount to anything because of mental illness well, guess what, people? You're wrong. Look where I am today. Look where they are, you know. So yeah, yeah I have pictures of all kinds of things. Yeah. So with your transition, Naomi, you transitioned from female to male? From Naomi to um, Andrew Paul Roach. So call me Andrew Paul Roach. or uh, You could call me Andrew or you could call me Minnie, you know. Oh. So, um, um, how, what... Have you done the um, the drug procedure, like the chemical procedure, or have you also done the surgeries, or where are you in your transition? I just had the top surgery. They removed my breast, but to be honest, I had a biopsy and had cancer in one of my breasts on my left side when I was in Cuba, St. Augustine, Florida. I think it was about 2008. So, you know, I had I'm problems so with my breasts my whole life because it was so heavy, and I never liked them. Although I do miss playing with them. Now when I want to tune a radio, I have to tune an actual radio. Are you, are you, <laughs> but I didn't do the bottom surgery. I, no doctors come in at my privates with a fucking sharp knife. Hands off the merchandise. So are you? And I took testosterone. I'm sorry. I took testosterone also and. That didn't work out because it was raising my blood pressure and causing my mental illness to get worse. And my skin was breaking out. Cystic acne. It looks like meth sores. But go ahead. Oh, gosh. No, that sounds that sounds really terrible. Like, yeah. wait, okay. <laughs> Did, can you, you could be, are people aware that the, um, that there could be such awful side effects with the testosterone that it could be unbearable for that's why I don't use it anymore. Plus it makes you smell really bad and mushrooms grow out of your pores. And then you can smoke those mushrooms happies. Okay, I'm kidding about that, that, but that's nasty. Um (laughs) did you know prior to getting your breasts removed? And at what age did you get that done? Um, I was about two. No, I'm kidding. Um, I was 40, 46 years old, I believe. Yeah. Okay. okay. And you did you already know you had a bad reac- reaction to testosterone at that time? Or did you know? Yeah, it took about react? two years. It took about two years. And I also have to mention I had a hysterectomy, but that had nothing to do with it being transgender. That just happened to work out. Funny how timing works out. I got in an accident on a bicycle in Key West and a, something got stuck in a spokes. The handlebar swung around and the bike jerked to a sudden halt and the handlebar went right into my right side, killing, busting open my ovary. I had to get emergency hysterectomy. But they x-rayed me and found out I have a prostate. And when I was having sex with somebody in, in 
Key West in 2012. He says, it looks like he had surgery. I'm like, what do you mean? He says, this guy, you know, he saw a lot of women's bottoms. So he said, it looks like he had surgery. So I went to the hospital when I came back to Chicago. I said, what, what is this about? And they said, well, you were born a hermaphrodite. But in 1969, when I was born around that time, they didn't tell the parents. And if they did, the parents kept their fucking mouth shut about it. You know, 1969 wasn't today. You didn't just go around saying, hey, my child is a pee pee and a wiener, you know, and you'd get murdered for something like that. You saw the movie so, Sleep Boy Camp. Tell me I'm wrong. If you were a hermaphrodite at birth, did your parents choose to do anything to you surgically? Um, to Again, my parents are from the World War II generation, and I don't even think they knew about it. And if they did, like I said, they kept their mouth shut. They never led me to believe that there was anything different about me other than they thought that I was mentally slow. <laughs> you didn't know? Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, oh, shit, someone might call me. Let me do something here real quick. I don't know if I did it yet. Hold on. I'm going to see if I can shut off my phone. Let me look. Yeah, I got to do that right now. Someone will call I'm, me. Oh, I'm shit. Hoping for your Hold on. Turning on my do not disturb so no one calls me. This time Thank is your you. time. This time is your yeah. time. I'm bleached is a very good friend of mine. He's the, like, first person, like, really, really the first person I've ever been on YouTube with. So, I'm bleached. Who are you talking Bleach. about? I'm kind of not I'm understanding. Super chat. So I'm just thanking Unbleached, my friend here for the super chat. Oh, okay. Some of your words got cut off. Oh, my bad. Sorry. Message um, stuff, please. Because your parents are so old school, is it possible that you just wouldn't know if something like that? And if you don't feel comfortable talking about anything, just let me know and we'll, we can move on. Oh, of course. I think it's best to be honest about shit. Someone's going to fucking murder me because God doesn't make mistakes. You're an abomination. Well, you better talk to God then because he's the one that fucked me up like this. There are people out there that are born with all kinds of weird things. They go their whole life. They never get married, never have kids. They die alone, miserable because they can't talk about it. Well, fuck that shit. I'm going to make freedom for everyone by being the first to talk about it. But thank God there was others who talked about this before me. Well, that's wonderful that you're so open and so honest about everything. And um, it will let future people know that um, about, first of all, like the potential issues with testosterone like that you had, but then also that other people in similar situations to you, that they're not alone. Because I, I can't even imagine how scary that would be to find out how old were you when you found out in your 40s? I couldn't even imagine finding out in my 40s that That's true. I was actually, 40. Yeah. I believe I was 42 years old because it was in 2012. Wow. Wow. Uh, what was that news? What did you do with that news? How did you react? Was it a relief? Did you, I wasn't you surprised. Like I said, no, no wonder I'm so weird. No wonder my mind is the way it is because my mind is both male and female. And by the way, all males, all females have both testosterone and estrogen you have both hormones if the levels are not balanced right you will women that's why women have mustaches and you see men out there with facial features and high voices like women growing tits and shit it's because the hormone levels are off right and as a hermaphrodite if how do you even know what the correct hormone levels are if you're not really one gender or the other that must be Incredibly. You go to the doctor. You go to the doctor. Docs, quacks. <laughs> I call doc doctors ducks instead of quacks. They don't know what I'm talking about. Well, I guess but now they you, will if they're watching this. But then you kind of know whether or not your hormones are wrong by symptoms. So, if, like for instance, uh -huh. you have this acne. You had um, the other medical issues that you were labeling from the. Well, I have this. Well, I have this. In fact, the guy was a lawyer. He used to be like me, a female to male. And he says to me, we went one time, your life's going to be the most, your next eight years of your life's going to be the most living fucking hell you ever went through. When boys, think about when boys go through puberty, how 
fucked up their skin gets and awkward right. and suddenly they shoot up about three three feet and you're tall all of a sudden they don't feel comfortable in their bodies my nephew he had that problem you know he's not transgender but my nephew when he, he was a normal size kid and then a year later he shot up three feet so he was pretty uncomfortable you know so we, puberty is misery for girls and boys i hated it That's so I I, I want to get into this. I'll just address super chats really quick. Thank you, Chris Benson. I hope you have a great evening too. And um, somebody wants you to perform Nobodies. Do you know the Nobodies? Do you Actually, know I have Marilyn Manson Mephistopheles up here. I already got my music cued. Don't worry so, about it then. It's nice to know that you have requests that you're if, Yeah, it is. If I would have known in advance, well, it's kind of hard to know. It's possible I could do it at the end, you know, if there's a karaoke of it. Have that person look up and see if there's a karaoke version, because I don't know that one by heart. If there's a karaoke of that, I'm willing to give that song a try at the end. Awesome, yeah. And you can you could end out the stream, so you could take I gotta please my fans, too. So, yeah, do that research for me, and you will get your song. Um... So can I can I sing Mephistopheles right now and get that out of the way? Yeah, but can I, I ask one question before you do? Oh yeah, go ahead and ask another so, question. Did you stop? Um, what age did you transition to a man? And then why why do you not identify mm -hmm. as like non-binary, especially now that you know that you? Well, I call myself an androgynous non-binary male because even though I know I'm not a man. People say, you're not a man, you never will be, but I was born with those parts, so I can actually say I'm a male and a female, but because I was forced to grow up with a with female's parts and forced to be a woman, you know, I feel like I was actually a woman, but I hated it. I knew there was something different about me all my life. I thought something was missing in my life. What's that missing piece? I thought it was, well, maybe I don't have the right education or the right job or or the right something. It turns out it's, I'm missing who I'm supposed to be. I'm more male-minded up here. I like to wear the men's clothes, and I feel more comfortable living as a male. So I can actually say I'm a male somewhat because of the way I was born. It's, it, it gets very technical, and there's a lot. And I know there's only two genders, which is true. There's male and female, but you can have a little bit of too much or not enough of either. That's possible. So I'm realistic about it. I, I'm not into this 50 gender stuff and all crazy and shit. You know, I'm pretty down to earth with common sense about this. I live my best life and survive the best life I can considering what has happened to me. At, at least I'm not out there being all psychotic and I'm not suicidal. I love who I am now. I don't regret having to transition. I don't regret it at all. People can't seem to know that though. <laughs> Well, Look at my makeup. You wanted to see that. Let's let you go live. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> now, I didn't turn the music up too loud because I've had people tell me that my music overpowered my voice, so I hope you can hear me. I don't know if I feel no better. I feel no better. I don't know if I feel no better. I'm not a bit different. I'm just a big mistake. The best days so far. And the best so fantastic. I will make you I will make you make you make you make 
Don't know if I can open it up. I've been open to a push. Double cross, cross, double in my path, though. I will be Awesome. Great job. Thank you so much. You're that welcome. How was the audio? Was the audio good on that? The microphone could be a little bit better, but you killed it. You oh, killed this it. is a this is a prop actually. I'm still working with audio solutions. I got something today. It came in the mail, but it only came an hour before the show, and I didn't have time to test it. But I got this little, it's called a lavalier microphone. This would clip on my body like this. This part is supposed to go in the phone. So we're going to be trying that out. My thanks to the person who bought me that microphone, by the way. Yeah, StreamYard will, like, ruin your audio, too. StreamYard's a bitch. Yes. But you so, saw my video. You could see that's just what the, the speaker and the phone by itself is what I make my regular videos with. So it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, no, it's pretty good. It's great. Um, so we did get sent pictures of you pro pre transition. If you'd like us to show them, you can show a few. Okay, I'll show um, you. <laughs> you know who that yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about him in a minute. Yeah, there's some pictures of me. All right. 
Okay, there was one there when I just got out of the Marines and because I tried the Marine Corps and I totally like washed out of boot camp because I'm a failure. No, because <laughs> at least I tried though. I was in there six weeks and I learned a little bit, like how to kill the usual. The second one there on the, to the right is me holding a albino alligator at a St. Augustine, St. Augustine alligator farm. On Anastasia Island in St. Augustine. Um, I used to pretend to be a zookeeper there. About three months later, they found that I wasn't really a zookeeper. Okay, that was me when I went to school to be a paralegal holding the FBI law bulletin because I really wanted to be in the FBI. Oh, they interviewed me. No, I didn't get the job, but you know, they thought I looked so good on paper that they did call me for an interview in like awesome. 1998. Yeah. Okay, there are next to it. That's when I'm a, obviously a male with my big beer belly that I love so much. Mm -hmm. Fans love it too. They love that I'm comfortable in my body, which I am. I just love to have a beer belly because of diabetes. Yeah. I have to whittle it down every once in a while. We also have some yeah. of your art. Um, the person who sent this is definitely a fan of yours, and they sent us some of your beautiful artwork. You I think I know who sent it too. Yeah. Um, just me with my cat Ripley when I was on Ripley's Believe It or Not, which there is a video that you'll see, 2003. If you look in my um, playlist under mini shows, you'll see the video and it could be provided as well by Tony. Um, also, the picture of my artwork, they, well, you, there was a picture there of a painting of a sailboat in the beach. That's yeah. um, in Key West, Florida. That's Higgs Beach in Key West, Florida. Wow, that was really beautiful. You're quite an artist. You are really quite the artist. How often, mm -hmm. wait, first of all, how did you start painting? And how often do you paint? I don't do so much anymore. When I was younger, I did. I still know how to do it, but it's hard when you get my age. I kind of lost a... Yeah. Yeah. You lose, you lose yeah. your interest in yeah. doing things. That'd be cool. I, I would like to see you pick that back up because you're very talented. I wanted to be a cartoonist, actually, and I'm, I'm good at drawing, but coming up with the ideas and stuff, I'm not so good with that. So actually, speaking of art and creativity, can you tell me about how you started YouTube and what it's been like for you on YouTube so far? And I started, what well, yeah. I started YouTube in 2016, but I wasn't making videos. It just, for some reason, came with when I got my smartphone and I just started listening to peaceful ASMR type music, like thunderstorms, Christmas music, um, streams, you know, like the nice Asian music, traditional stuff like that. I never even liked like put the, hit the like button on videos or made comments probably for like a year and a half after that. I was too afraid to make comments and people subscribe to me. The more videos, like I, that I liked or I saved and I learned how to save them into my make a playlist of my favorite stuff they're like subbing I had like 188 subs before I even had a channel I, I in fact I've had YouTube for seven years before I started making my first video and my fit I made my first video by mistake it was an accident it's just a four second video well I was trying to take a photograph and Something wasn't working right. I'm like, this fucking shit. And it made a video of me and I played it back. I'm like, what is this? I pressed it. I it's in this fucking shit. And I started laughing. So definitely I saw on YouTube, there was a button that said upload video. And you know, I was always afraid to do that. But finally I tried it and guess how easy it was. So I said, whoa, if it's that easy. Then I'm, I waited another month and made one on the Mephistopheles of Chicago. And I had blonde hair in that. It's, that's a rare one. I used, I used to have blonde hair most of my life. I didn't start dyeing my hair black. It's what, you, maybe a year, a year and a half ago. Wow. And I, yeah, did, we, I look better this way. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought you, like, I think you look great this way. I also thought you looked great in those photos. I thought you looked, yeah. Yeah. Whatever makes you happiest. You say that you're happiest now this way, and so that's all that really matters. I sure am. So, um, what what is your community like on YouTube? Do you have like other content creators that you 
come into contact with? And then I also see that you have Discord. So what's that yeah, like? Yeah, my channel is pretty professional. It's pretty straight cut. I have playlists. 98% of it is my videos, but I have a few channels for things that I like, like my fantasy ASMR and my um, nature ASMR. That's, I put that in there for me when I want to hear peaceful stuff because I don't always want to hear loud rock and roll. Um, sometimes, you know, when I go to bed and I need some peaceful crackling sounds of purring cats and shit like that. Yeah, I like that. And I put it in there for my other fans too, so that if they say, hey, how can I fall asleep? I, I'm like this all the time. I say, listen to this and I'll send them that playlist. Um, but most people won't use it. Yeah. Um, see, how, see, how, see how that's organized? I'm very organized. That's one of the main reasons people ask me, how do you survive? Because I'm organized and I'm everything in its place, you know, like a German. <laughs> well, I am part German, so... Um, yeah, um, that picture in my master, if you show that again, that's a picture of the paparazzi taking photos of me while I was on stage. You can put that back up, you'll see. My main page, you'll see. It's on the top, go back up. You see that picture there? With the guy at the camera yeah. and... Oh, yeah, yeah that's so cool. I've, I've sang on stage in public and that video's in there too. And I even made a magnet out of that picture because it's just about one of my favorite pictures ever. And when I do that Andersonville Fest again this year, I'm going to go sing again and try to make another video. It's karaoke, but still, you know, how many people have the guts to get up on a stage? There you go. You can see the MC had a giant smile on his face the whole time because I'm funny. <laughs> Being an entertainer is about making people smile and laugh and forget their problems to enjoy. That's fun. So, but um, like we said earlier in the stream, like you have some beef with some content creators. So how did that get started? Well, they actually they have a beef with me and I usually just block them when they start getting crazy with me. <laughs> well, what happened with like Mass Hole Report? Oh, hold on a sec. Um, Sorry, you don't want me sniffling through the whole damn show. No, I don't. Okay. All right, there you go. So, yeah, what started your conflict with Mass Hole Report? Mass I don't know. I guess because my behavior, because one person, it takes just one bad seed to rot the whole bucket of apples. One person came in and started trolling me, dead naming me. It just general disrespect that this is not acceptable. I don't care if it's on the street or on the internet. It wasn't acceptable. And of course, stupid me, I had to take the bait and fight back with them. Then I got three people mad at me, and then I fought with them. And then you see how it grew? How more, The whole damn server ended up hating me because of one person. And then I guess Kate didn't like me anymore because she says, you treat my staff bad. And that's true, but I didn't mean to. And it seems like when you do something like that, there's no going back. She wouldn't let me like redeem myself and start new. And that's what caused to have the tension between us. You got to let people be people. People make mistakes. Don't keep punishing them for it. That's all. You know, and what? then someone, someone made a video. They took my video and it. They bastardized it and put it up and I struck the video. So, I wouldn't take the strike down and then it expired. I said, okay, I'm willing to take the strike down. And then they're like, oh, it expired. It seemed like no matter how much I tried to accommodate them, as soon as I would agree to something or do what they tell me, they would come up with some other reason why we need to st still be uh, uh, off level. I, I just think that they would like to keep people, especially entertainers like me, they think we are what you call low cow. Well, one day from low cow to cash cow, that's going to be the name of my book. No. Well, I really don't like the phrase. I mean, I I interview a lot of people who other people may refer to as lol cows, but yeah. I really just think. I mean, people are out there creating content. Some of it you will like, some of it you won't. And if you're out there just bashing people for just creating content, then you're in the wrong. Um, yeah, people have the guts to get up there. And be in front of people 
that takes a lot of motherfucking guts. Yeah. And people trash them. You know, maybe, you know, you ever stop to think that maybe I do my music because I do it for my survival because I enjoy it and it just turns out other people enjoy it. I never expected when I posted videos that anyone would ever notice me. Um, I, I did it because and I learned to play the guitar a little bit also the last two years. And I know a few songs. In fact, the two I just sang, I know how to play those on a guitar. So I learned all that because my memory has been fading due to diabetes and old age and from being hit in the head a lot growing up. That causes a lot of memory and mm. psychiatric problems. So I have yeah, bipolar, yeah. I have PTSD, I have it all, you know, but I think I'm doing pretty good considering that's why I don't abuse alcohol. I don't use drugs. I stay away from all that shit. I stay in control because if you don't stay in control yourself, someone else will control you. 100%. I, I'm sorry that you've experienced so much abuse throughout your life. Do you think you oh, correlate God. your abuse from your father and your brother with religion? And that's why you're so... Not, like, just, my, not just them, but the church, people in the church, the teachers in the church, because I, I went to a private school, just like Marilyn Manson, private fundamental Baptist type Christian school. In fact, it was a fundamental Baptist Christian school. Then I, my dad pulled me out, put me in the public school, then he put me back in and he pulled me out and put me back. You know, it was back and forth. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I can't even imagine. When did you discover Marilyn Manson? Well, I knew about him, but I, I, he was kind of just there. And I just didn't like when he had long hair and he was skinny and stuff and running around in his hospital of nasty stuff. But when I saw him two years ago, I just happened to see it on a video and I said, because of Kanye West, he was doing Danda in Chicago and coming to Soldier Field. And so I saw him, I watched that whole video. I was curious. I said, wow. And I saw Marilyn Manson come out of that White House there. And rumor has it the house is still there, by the way. But um, yeah, so he comes out and look at all handsome in his Hugo Boss coat and his fucking black shirt and his gothic looking hair. Now that's the kind of Marilyn Manson I can appeal to. I like that older look he's an older man he's seven months older than me we're actually born the same year 1969 so we have that in common um he um this was very attractive to me and i started looking up his videos and i saw kill when i saw kill 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 for me when i saw that video with johnny depp that's it i was in love with marilyn manson mm -hmm. and then what made it harder was when he did the mephistopheles when i found that video i just whoa <laughs> that's the Marilyn Manson I appeal he appeals to me as an older man rather than in the 1990s people I go in his videos I look in his videos about him and even in his own channel people saying you're fat you need to lose weight you need to get skinny you need to get young again you know what the fuck is that shit if you love someone you love them no matter what he's in a different stage of living now but he's still Marilyn Manson he's still my favorite entertainer He's awesome. I've been on Colonel yeah. Kurtz a few times, and I was on Colonel Kurtz a few times, so he knows who I am. Oh, wow, that's really cool. That is awesome. That I was, is great. I was on her show three times. Wow. So. I met a lot of fans. Okay, go ahead. So you had, it just seems like you had a lot of transitions two years ago. Like a lot of things changed in your life. You started posting content. You started dressing like Manson. You started becoming androgynous instead of a man. So because I'm comfortable, I've always been androgynous, but I feel comfortable in my skin and that's why I don't mind. I, I like to hear my own voice when I'm singing, when I'm talking. I like to see my image. I, I even take screenshots from my videos and I even put them up in my Discord, you know, for my fans. And sometimes I'll release a photo that nobody else has seen if a fan is extra good to me. You know, if they donate to me, Am I allowed to tell you my cash app, by the way? Oh, of course. You could, cash app. We, could, we could post your cash app um, Yeah, if, right it's, if my friend Pony is in there, he could post my cash app, which is Minnie Manson Talent. And my PayPal is paypal.me slash Minnie Manson Talent. You know, if anyone wants oh. to donate or Minnie buy merch. Manson, Minnie Manson Talent was the PayPal? Mini Manson talent. There's no dots or lines between that. A PayPal is mini. PayPal is um, PayPal dot 
M E as in me slash Minnie Manson talent, all one word. Well, Henry has it correct. I have it incorrect. So here's Henry. Henry has posted it in chat. Let me get my glasses so I can see. I don't, don't take that off the screen. I have to use glasses, unfortunately. That's correct. Minnie Manson talent. Thank you, Henry. The producer. Ooh, produ a producer. Ooh. Producer. He's the one who's producer. been managing. So I could be hands-free. My lipstick came off. Hold on. For the audience, because the audience yeah, loves yeah. my talk. Is somebody looking up that song you want me to sing as well? Yeah, we actually already have um, it queued up, so Henry can play the music for you, I believe. Right, Henry? Oh, no, no. I actually have to look that up because um, there'll be a three to seven we second did. delay. Let well, me look it, it up. I just want I just wanted you to verify that there was a karaoke of it. Um, let me hit, get out of here. I'm, I'm going to cue that up while you're still talking to me. Damaging. Okay. Lost out. Well, I could check that ad, out. Actually, I don't have ads, but what, what's the song called? Nobody's N O No Bodies. There is nobody. Oh, shit, there's a lot of nobodies on there. Marilyn Manson, oh, thank God, the first one that came up. Okay, whatever version it is, is the one I'm going to use. Um, we won't do it yet, but now I got it queued up. I'm very excited. Excellent. So there it is. So you don't have to play it. Don't do that because it won't. If I'm singing it and the music's playing on that end, it won't be like this. It'll be like this. It'll be like this instead of like this. <laughs> Red beer, that's my favorite beer. <laughs> really? That's awesome. You thought I was drinking an actual beer, didn't you? Oh, I fooled no, you guys. I, I refer to myself as black licorice or root beer because people either love me or hate me. It's true. I love black licorice, but I get migraines from it. So really? I can't have it too much. That's right. But it's so weird how controversial root beer is. People love root beer or they hate root beer. I haven't met Fuck anyone. Fuck those People are like, so cool, it's okay. Oh, that's cool. Look at you with your little fidget spinner. There's so many things. Well, look closer. There's David Bowie, Minnie Manson, and Minnie Manson. That's awesome. My are friend Tony made this for me. Thank you, Tony. Oh, Tony, he was the one who also sent us the pictures of you. That's right. He was one of my yeah. very favorite fans, Confidants. Oh. He told me oh. that you were a good person. He recommended you, and any recommendation he makes is a high recommendation. I yeah. trust his judgment. Server, you had so plenty I'm, of people there telling you that I was going to try to hurt you, so I was very even surprised. Even people... Fans that I trust and love even told me that. And I said, I don't understand. So I said, I will go on the show. Let me see what happens. If it runs smoothly, I can perform. I can talk about myself and make some new fans. You know, we we'll talk about a few little controversial things. But so far, you're very respectful. I don't see you trolling me or any shit like that. So, you know, I'm proud of you so far. For I watched your other videos. I went to your channel and educated myself. I don't know I who Turtle I Boy is. I don't know who these yeah. other people are, but I, I liked your interview with Turtle Boy. And you talked about Kate. You said something like Kate Eaters or Peter Eaters or something. That's it. Actually, I'm not a Peter Eater either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's funny. I just people want to be an entertainer. I don't want to get caught up in people's drama. You know, they like I me at Mass well, fine. And I know I have a lot of fans from there, so I'm not going to badmouth them either. But I just think that they shouldn't troll me and make up videos and treat me like I'm a retard. I'm not retarded. You know, I if I feel something's wrong, yeah, I know. I didn't say you did, but if if I feel like something's wrong, chances are it is, and I have to protect myself and do what's best for me. So my number one no, priority I is to enjoy what I do and to keep my fans happy. And I have two more of these, but if anyone wants one, you've got to give me a hundred dollars. It has a little cord that goes with it. It has a little speaker in it. It has um, 
a Swiss Army knife and a spoon, a fork, and a kitchen sink over here. <laughs> I'm kidding, but it does have a speaker. See? That's but cool. I don't really need that. So let me turn that off because it might interfere with my other um, Bluetooth device. It has a Bluetooth in there. Oh, there's a gun over here to you, like you could kill the bad guys if they come at you. Very useful, very useful. Do you have a license to carry that fidget spinner? I had to get one, a FOID license. Nice. <laughs> this is my lover. I see that. I see. Are, I went to ask you, are you attracted to men or women? Men mostly. Some women. Men. I've seen women. There was women here or there that I was attracted to. But I'm a large man. I mean, this is what I want to do right here. You're going to get it, Mr. Manson. <clears throat> People say I don't like Marilyn Manson. That's bullshit. But I played along with some people and I said, yeah, I don't like them. But that doesn't mean that's true. You got to look at someone's actions and overall everything they do, not just go for their words. Just, I say a lot of controversial things on purpose. And sometimes I'll just agree with people just to shut them up. But I love Marilyn Manson very much. I've, I've even said some controversial things about him. Marilyn Manson's smart enough. If he knows... That video I'm, that was made wasn't real. And if he isn't smart enough to know, then there's shame on him because he has an IQ of 148. He's did pretty smart, make, though. Did someone make a video claiming that you didn't like Meryl and Manson? Yes, and I struck it because it wasn't mm -hmm. fair use. It was not under the terms. Parody, mm -hmm. yes, they can make fun of me all they want, but they had me saying something that wasn't true. And a lot of people, the problem is, there are people that know it's not real, and I'm sure Marilyn Manson knows it's not real, but the vast majority of his fans do think it's real. And I've gotten, I've lost a lot of fans. I've gotten a lot of threats, including death threats, communicated with me through the internet, which is a federal crime. And it, believe me, they watch this shit. And people have gotten me so mad that I'd fight back with them. There's people who think I'm the worst person on the earth, that I treat all my fans like shit. When, well, no, I don't, but if someone gets too close, they'll give me money and shit and expect something more. Hell, I bought merch from you. I donated to you. I gave you $100 for this, and then they expect me to, here's my phone number, call me, talk to me every night. I can't do that. I'm very busy, and I need to have time to myself, but I do love to talk to people. I don't like being alone all the time. I mean, one hour, two hour, fine, but eight hours a night, I can't do things like that. You know, no, I hope this... I that my fat, if he's watching, I hope he understands. I don't hate him. I got mad at someone because I didn't want to be in the phone so much. My um, ex-husband, his wife, his wife is in a hospital and on her deathbed. I thought she died, but I found out today she didn't actually die. But his mother died yesterday, and that fucked me up real bad. And I said some really bad things to a friend of mine saying, oh, I'm glad she's dead. But I didn't mean that. I was just really upset. Yeah. I, I'm no. sorry. That's hard. So we all say things yeah. that we don't mean when we're upset, and something that we need to we all need to work on. Um, People telling me I'm not a Satanist and shit because I don't measure up to their standards, or I don't have sympathy towards like children or this or that. You know, I say a lot of controversial things. And I I really don't have a lot of sympathy because I was beaten and brutally abused growing up as a child. No one cared about me, so. I don't have kids or a family. I'm, I suppose if I was married and I had kids and a house, you'd go to school, you know, get the backpack, feed the, feed them, you know, and you worry about your kids. I couldn't handle it. I never had children because there is no way in fucking hell that even though I'm responsible, I don't believe that I'm mentally capable of having kids because the bipolar, how I was abused, called a loser my whole life. And, that's all I need is to get angry one time and say, you're a loser. That kid, his life is ruined if you call your child a loser. You're supposed to put blessings and say, I love you every night. You're a blessing to me. Because if you say to your kid, you're a loser, then God has to actually make that real. Because parents have, they're given some kind of power by God that a non-parent wouldn't have. They have this like authority. And it's almost like if you call your kid a loser, then God actually has to make that true and the kid will be a failure. So you want your kid to be famous one day and buy you a mansion. You tell them they're a winner every day and you build them up when they're nobody so that one day they can become somebody. So it's a good thing I believe in myself and some other people. I have fans. I have 
friends, they believe in me. But I, the most important thing is you have to believe in yourself. And that's what, what I do. I believe in myself. People say I'm delusional. Yeah. Well, I followed advice from Gene Simmons, and he's very smart with his business and all that. So a lot of his quotes and a lot of his advice rings true to me. So he says, you only get the respect that you demand. And he says to be delusional. He'll go on a, a, on a talk show or whatever, they interview him. And they'll say, it's nice to meet you. He says, it's nice to meet me too, you know. He might be smug and all that, but look at it. Look, he was 40, 400 million dollars. So obviously, you know, he's someone yeah. to look up to and he has the right ideas about things and he's nice to his fans. Yeah. And I know I could be a lot nicer to my fans. I want to tell my fans right now, I do appreciate you. I wouldn't be shit without you. I need you to be my fans and to watch for me, protect me, you know. Well, you have a lot with me. And I like I know those people who said for you not to come on here. I'm sure a lot of them had really good intentions and were concerned for you for whatever reason. I don't know. I think they'll turn around. They see if they see how you respect me and this turns out good at the end, you're gonna win them over. Because I, I will no. say, hey. She, I don't know what she did to other people, but she sure respected me. I mean, everything is online, so we haven't taken down any interviews unless they were porn bombs or fake. So this is, yeah, yeah, this is going to be your most popular. Believe it or not, this is going to be your most popular video and interview. I don't know how many people are watching. About seventy people right now. Seventy. Wow. Well, for my old fans that I already have that know me, thank you, and for my hopefully brand new fans today look up Minnie manson on youtube i'm also on twitter as andrew paul roach it says Minnie manson on there and twitter is min mini underscore manson underscore talent so and i have um tiktok under Minnie manson talent which is all one word together with no underscores so that's the only social media that I officially use. Well, Nasty Nathaniel is a fan of yours. He's been very yes. excited for you all night. Hey, well, thank you, Nate. I would like you to end the night with as many performances as you want. You could. I could do one. But before we'll we go. This one we'll keep this at a respectable um, length. And. I'll sing the nobodies. And then but if you want to end it, what was that? You, before you start your song, we're going to yeah. use your song as a time to look for questions. So if you have any questions. Okay, we're going to have a question and we'll do a question thing too after I sing this last song, okay? How about that? Yeah. So, so if you have any questions for Minnie Manson, put them in chat. All super chats will definitively be read. All good questions, Henry will star, and we'll ask Manson after his song. Go ahead. Okay, let me get to work here then. Uh, let me turn my speaker on. <laughs> I want to be pretty tomorrow. I don't understand. Today I'm dirty. I want to be pretty tomorrow. I don't understand. And nobody's. Yes, I was 
Yeah, that's I I'll drop a word here and there, you know, and I admit I'm honest and open about dropping words because of my disability, because I don't catch words. Also, I'll look at karaoke and people are right, I should prepare it. But when someone just puts something there, I'll give it my best and you'll still get some kind of a performance out of it. Mistakes oh. and all, but ninety nine percent of the time I could do it just like that, even songs I've never heard. And to be fair, this karaoke didn't have like you know how they show when you should do the words. They just put the words, and I guessed, and I got it. Mm. I feel good uh -huh. because I did it better than I thought. <laughs> yeah. So, Je my friend Ruru here, she wants to know if you're a Jeffrey Star fan. I don't even know who that is. Well, then no. How about Jack Star? Do you know who Jack Star is? I don't know who that is. All right. Well, what other talents do you have besides painting and drawing and performing? Because you're clearly very talented. Just about anything creative. I'm a writer, too. I can write. Oh, that's awesome. Poetry or, like, books or... What? Poetry, Wait, books, right? comic books. I used to write comic books and children's oh, books, things like that. Oh, let's kick ass. Um, okay, so we have a friend named Shelly. She's actually the one who asked this question. And Wilma Dickfit, Rada wants you to give Wilma Dickfit a shout out. Um, so first uh, Wilma, Wilma Dickfit needs a shout out? Well, here you go. Here's your shout out. Okay, well, Wilma Dickfit yeah. also wants to know if you would be willing to sing with Anarch Chick Chick sometime in the future who is with another who? contractor and our chick chick i never heard of that person but get in touch with me let's talk Woo! let's make it happen oh. captain you know what else um, i do I, I do videos for twenty dollars you could choose a song as long as there's the karaoke i can work from you know it makes it easy for me twenty dollars and i'll say your name in a video i do do that and i appear on shows usually for fifty dollars you know, if you can afford it, but I still will negotiate if you can't. Like, I went in this show for free, you know, because an entertainer does need to be 
on a show, you know, and you can't always ask for money. So, you know, if you want to give donations, that's fine, but I won't ask for, like, I won't demand it. So I are used you to, but that's not the way to go. Go ahead. Are you a fan of Swamp? I've never even heard that, of Swamp. Swamp? Am I a are fan you of who? I don't know. Swamp? S-W-A-M-P? Swamp? I don't know this person. Yeah, I don't know them either. These are kind of some oddball questions. Do you have but any pets? The, I used to have a cat named Ripley, and I had a snake named Reggie. He was a ball python. I had some oh. corn snakes. I had a snake named Casper because he was white and he was real little. And I said, Casper. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so, um, well, and also, final question, are your pronouns he, him? I assume yes. they were. He, the male okay, pronouns, no. he, he, him, his, the male pronouns, please, yes. I accidentally... I was on some show. I, I didn't know who Melton John was. And I said, hello, sir. And he blocked me. I didn't mean to misgender that person. I didn't know that she uses a female pronouns and she likes ma'am. And I couldn't type ma'am in there. He blocked me so quick. I wasn't able to correct my mistake. So oh, no. if Melton John is out there, I'm sorry. I didn't know. I'm it was sorry. an accident. I was trying to be respectful. My father always hated when people would call him sir, and he was a man, you know. He, up north, people don't like that, but down south, I lived down south for a considerable amount of time. I was taught to say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, you know, the usual pleasantries. And it's almost, get this. You, know, they, you have to do that. Someone walk toward you down the street, and you're walking towards them, you say hello, because it's, it's a considerable offense down there socially if you don't. So, you know, I was just trying to be respectful and stupid me for the one time I say sir I get in trouble for it you know so I yeah. wanted to make a special mention of that so I don't I, time, I don't know the person I've heard his name but I don't know him but her I mean I don't know her and I made this mistake one time in the military I um called a ma'am a sir so they made me write yes ma'am no ma'am like Oh, yeah, in the military. And I spelled ma'am wrong. I spelled it M-A-M. It's M-A apostrophe A-M. I spelled it M-A-M every time. Yes. It's like saying madame, but they take the D out. I think that's where that comes from. Right, right. I see that now. But my first week in the military, I did not. What branch were you in? Um, technically that was a uh, Naval Academy summer camp, but I was in the Air Force Academy for two years. Oh, that's awesome. Did you fly in a plane or anything? Yeah, we did glider training. Did you jump out of a perfectly good airplane without a parachute? <laughs> I did not. We got to choose either glider training or parachute training, and I chose glider training. There's no fucking way in hell I'd jump out of no fucking airplane, even if I had five parachutes. <laughs> And even if Marilyn yeah, maps it, I'll, I'll jump out with you. No, it's not going to happen. <laughs> your first jump is solo. And that, that's terrifying. Solo my thing. <laughs> okay, you said just some questions, though. And so is anybody like, oh, you just want to know something? You just want to say hello to your favorite entertainer? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we got through most of the questions i think we got through most of the questions like if you have a pet and if you're fans of i did people, shout outs and stuff so i think we got through them all but you know you had a great time and i i loved having you here and you could close off the show with one more performance if you want or we could just sure. end the year i could do all that right. Let me get, this is a very pleasant show i'm very pleased I have Marilyn Manson tourniquet. I wanted to make this a Marilyn Manson night specifically for Marilyn Manson as fans. I do love Marilyn Manson. So everyone, don't be thinking I hate him if you see any shit out there. All right, then. Yeah. <laughs> tourniquet. Oh, yeah. Touch me up by the bigger body. Yeah. I'll be next.